Welcome back to the hottest TV show, Access USI. I'm your favorite host, Amber Nicolette. And hold on to your seat because we have an interesting show for you guys. Hello and welcome to the second episode of Antics on Air. And we're going to do Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Bean Boozled Edition. So we have some interesting flavors to try. So Bean Boozled is basically one good flavor and one bad, and they're both the same color. So, so there's bugger or juicy pear. That's, that's uh, a good that's an interesting yeah. one. I'm scared about this dead fish. I'm most scared about liver and onions. Liver and onion. That's the new one. So there's new flavors. Uh, Yikes. Let's just say that that's why we decided to do this today. And we and are going to give it a try with, yeah. uh, with our Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader trivia as well. We're going to take a trip back to fifth grade and see how smart we are. Are you ready? I am ready. All righty. First question is... Which geometrical shape has no vertices? Are you allowed to tell me what a vertice is? Oh, well that's a whole other like level. Uh, <laughs> circle. Uh, well, a sphere, does that count? A circle is a sphere. <laughs> I would say it counts. Okay, so he doesn't have to do the bean boozle this time. I don't gotta do time. the beans this time. I don't know how smart All I right. am compared to a fifth I'm grader, even though I'm in college. I'm gonna dig we'll deep in here. And That's give not you, good. I'm gonna give you a random one. Um, All right. Um, so this is a, this is kind of like a a grammar. A grammar one. Oh so no. <laughs> it's fill in the blank for okay. number 62. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin blank the first humans to visit the moon. The first. Wait. I will I will read <laughs> I will reread that re -read for you. That for you. <laughs> yep. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin blank the first humans to visit the moon. What in the world blank? <laughs> okay, I give up. What is it? They were. Oh, the first are you serious? Yep, it was that easy. I, this is fifth grade. I thought it was grammar, a trick remember? question. All right, so you will be taking the first bean uh, of the. Um, of I the better segment. not get a bad I'm gonna, one. I'm gonna shake them up. So you get to chant a chant. Oh, we're gonna. <laughs> you get a chance to redeem yourself. So he has to guess whether I'm eating a good one or a bad one. All right, so on top here, we have, let me look at the flavor. It looks like this one's either going to be stink bug or toasted marshmallow. And I'm not trying to let him redeem himself, so I'm going to try to act like I'm not eating. Did you say stink bug? That is disgusting. Okay. Stink bug or toasted marshmallow. All right. And... It's bad. I think I think it's a uh, stink bug. That is not a good phase. I don't know. <laughs> uh, stink bug. That is disgusting. Presto! Presto! Oh. She ate a stink bug. Presto. That's hilarious. All right. Bro, we're gonna need to brush our teeth after this. I'm telling you. She probably regrets uh, getting those for today. Mm. I will let you do the oh, honors snap. to ask me a question. Oh snap, Crackle Pop, that is disgusting. I could tell it was, it was very difficult. You were trying to hold it in. I still have that taste on my tongue, but we're gonna, we're gonna push through, okay? All right. Um, so your question is, all right, we're gonna give you a fill in the blank. Okay, I'm scared. Work hard, blank, get success. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is so funny. Work hard to get success. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. He got it right. Yes! This is not even I don't even gotta fair. eat no beans, yo. Those things are scary. I do, I'm gonna try and get every uh, answer correct so that I don't have to because- That's ridiculous. I feel like <laughs> you just tortured yourself. That is absolutely ridiculous, guys. I'm gonna get this next one because I swear I'm smarter than a fifth grader. How am I in college if not? I graduated from fifth grade. Okay, I'm ready. All right, um, we're gonna call this a, a literature question. So uh, a literature number 51, question. 
Who wrote the play Romeo and Juliet? I know this one. William Shakespeare. Yes, you're correct. Oh, you're and correct. about. You do not need to eat a bean this time. I'm a poet and I know it. Okay. <laughs> 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 Dr. Seuss. Oh, snap. Hey, people say I look like the Who from Whoville, so. Because my nose. It's sad. I kind of look like Horton. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for your I'm question? Ready. I'm not He's more than that. ready. Okay. How many verbs are present in this sentence? We slept while they danced and cooked us meals. <laughs> we slept while they danced and cooked us meals. How many verbs? All right, so at first I was trying to remember what a verb <laughs> was. And now that I have that concept ready in my head, I'm going to say the that, drum roll, there was three verbs. I'm over this. <laughs> no beans! <laughs> We're gonna bean him, just wait. He's getting beaned. I'm not gonna get beaned. He is getting baked beans. I'm gonna go the whole segment without eating a single bean. He is gonna get Mr. Beaned. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready this time. Have I gotten everyone wrong? That's ridiculous. No, Send you me got back William Shakespeare correct. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Um, yeah, I'm creative. Okay, so since I don't know the answer to this, I'm going to ask it to you because I, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to know it either. Okay. Um, for number 64, what are oxymorons? Oh, I definitely know what this is. It's like... A literary, literary device? Yes, it is a literary device, but there's more to it. There's more to it? It's a liter- okay, an oxymoron. What do you mean there's more to it? <laughs> what do you so mean? So they are a literary device, but what do they do? You know what, go ahead and get the bean ready. <laughs> I will give you three more seconds. Okay, it, they, One, um, um, two, um, it's like a metaphor. No, that's another, uh, that's another okay. literary I'm device. Give you the bean. Um, the what? answer was, and this is why I asked it to you because I would not have gotten it right, but antonyms used together to form a sentence or description. How would I know that? I would not have that exact definition. I didn't know it either. Amber's getting beaned right, again. We got a red one here. Uh, so this is either going to be old bandage. Okay, let me start the timer. pomegranate. Old band, I better not get another bad one. I so had stink bug earlier, that was bad enough. Old band-aid sounds. I'll tell you if, uh, if it's a good or bad one. It's bad, it's bad. Oh my I God, see it in your that eye. is awful. Presto. That is so oh my God. not even right. That's not right. These are like little devices <laughs> of terror. That's worse than the stink bug. Things. That's not even right. That was old band-aid. Oh, how am I supposed to? Amber's going to the dentist after this. My breath is forever messed up from this. Old Band-Aid and stink. Oh, my God. I'm okay. scared of the dentist, too. Like, these, those are two of my most feared objects. Uh, <laughs> most feared objects. Dentist. Okay, we're going to get you this time. All right. All right. Give oh, no. Give I'm going to give. I'm, you know what? You said that you struggled in math. Um, Why would you use that <laughs> against me? That's evil. <laughs> I'm not good at math either. Um, we don't have to go there. Okay. How many wheels will 99 bicycles and one tricycle have in total? <laughs> um, uh, 99 bicycles and one tricycle. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sorry for all the people <laughs> who know the answer and have to <laughs> see me struggle. They're like, come on, Mac-10. It's right there. Um, so I'm going to do 99 times 2, which I hope I know the answer <laughs> to. Um, 180 plus 18, 198 plus the one tricycle, 201. He's gotten every single one right. Hey, he has not had one I don't got to eat a bean. We're going to get him on the next one. We uh, have to. That's just, it's like end. you're not even participating if you don't get a bad bean. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll okay. give you an easy Let one. Let me get the timer ready because I already know I'm probably going to get a bean. No, I'll give you an easy one. Okay. Um, this way 
maybe we could level the playing field. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> what is the plural noun of deer? Deer? It's deer. Yes. Yeah. Deer, the yes. plural of deer is deer. And, uh, Press stone. There's no on, timer, on the but answer, is it spelled appropriate? She, it actually does say deer. It is the same. Deer. So. It's deer. Yeah. Okay. Plural of deer so is deer, not deers. So learn something new every okay, day. Okay. No bean. Amber's not getting bean. All right. You are. You're no more math, though. Like, give me a hard anything other than You're that. like, please give me a hard one. Okay. What would you call a character in a story that revolves around him or her? Him or herself? Yes. Uh, a, dun, dun. <laughs> a dynamic character. Wrong. You get bean. What was the answer? The answer is a protagonist. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, okay. I could have got it done. Right. We're going to get him a really bad one. I am really absolutely terrified. I feel like I'm sitting to wait for the dentist. Uh, all right, what is it? So this is... Uh, it is either dead... No, is it the bar I, I don't know. It's either... So I think it's dead fish or strawberry banana smoothie. Or it could be bar for peach. Bar for peach. Like, there's... Yeah, we'll see. You'll know. Wish all right, luck. let me get I'm the timer. Terrified. Guys, are you excited? Okay, ready, set, go. <laughs> It is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, presto. Okay. I think that's a good one to end on. So uh, we finally got him. I almost beam. threw up. That's oh, that's bad. That's well, we finally got Mac Ten beamed after me eating stink bug and what else? What 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 did I? Eat? He doesn't even know. He's in his own world right now. What was it? His <laughs> dead fish. Dead fish. That is an excellent one to end on. Oh, all right. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. He's Hit barfing. Home. <laughs> Don't play this. Spring season is finally here, and Cameron Douglas is up next to give us some safety tips for our stormy weather. Hi, everybody. Cameron Ellis here with today's edition of Water Extra. We are talking about severe water preparedness as we are nearing the spring season, and that's when we are most prone to seeing severe water, as well as in the summer season, too. It is likely as well at any point in time of the year, but just less likely in the colder months. But it can happen, so be prepared at any point in time. So we have three basic things we need to do to be prepared for severe water. Knowing where to go if a tornado warning is issued having a way to get alerts, having a safety kit prepared ahead of time to keep in your tornado safe spot. We'll first talk about knowing where to go if a tornado warning is issued for your area. Best option is a basement or lowest level of an interior structure away from exterior doors and windows. And then if you don't have a basement or lower level, centermost part of an interior structure, example, the bathroom or closet away from exterior doors and windows. And then if you happen to be outdoors, then try to get to an interior structure, the lowest level or center part if you can. And then if that's not available, then get as low to the ground as possible, down as deep into like a ditch or at the bottom of a hill. Just get down as low as possible and cover up with something if you've got that option. Or at the very least, put your hands on the back of your neck to protect your neck most importantly. And then if you're close by to your car, get in your car, fasten your seatbelt, and then try to get down as low as you can. And then again, cover your neck or even cover yourself with something if you have option. And that really goes for any of these options. And then one option I didn't list is if you have an underground tornado shelter to go to, that's an even better option too. And then getting water alerts, no water radio, best option overall, very reliable. They do perform routine tests on those radios. It comes from the National Weather Service specifically to make sure that the radio is working and ready to go for when it is needed during those days of severe weather. And it can be programmed for alerts specific to your location as well as alerts in surrounding locations too. Just depends on how you want to customize it. And some models are able to do a battery backup where it has the option to put batteries in it so that if you lose power it continues to operate it does come in uh, several models this picture is just an example of one of the few different models 
So you can find it in grocery stores, convenience stores, electronic stores, and online. Very good, reliable option. And then a smartphone is good too. You just need to make sure you have a water app that will send you severe water notifications and make sure you have the notifications turned on and the sound turned on so that you hear those alerts. That's really important too at nighttime when you're asleep and there's severe water, you wanna have something that will wake you up because that becomes a very dangerous time when people don't get those alerts and then they don't get to the severe water safety spot and it really just makes it an overall bad situation. So make sure you have something that will wake you up, especially uh, when we have severe water at night. And then that safety kit, these are just some basic items, but the list does go on. So feel free to, you know, take things that you would prefer to also have in there. But this is just a few select items that I found important. First aid kit, water bottle, flashlight, and extra batteries, a blanket to cover yourself from the debris shoes so that you protect your feet from the debris and then keys that you might need to access things uh, later on after the storm has passed of course and then another thing we're going to talk about here as we wrap up our water extra topic today is differentiating between a watch and a warning so it's important to know this so that you can be best prepared because the national water service issues a series of products for severe weather those being a severe thunderstorm watch as well as a tornado watch those are generally issued ahead of the storm, and then a tornado warning and a severe thunderstorm warning is issued when it's happening. So that kind of brings us to the definitions here. Watch is conditions are favorable for severe weather. Be prepared to take action. And a warning is severe weather is happening and or about to happen. So take action now. Get to that tornado safe spot. That's indeed what a warning means. So make sure that you are very familiar with those two different things so you can be prepared when you know you have either a watch or warning issued for your area. And then I'll leave you out with uh, today's segment with our outlook of the forecast in the next six to 10 days. Temperatures are going to be leaning just uh, above the normal and we will be seeing just above the normal in rain. So spring is going to be coming in kind of wet and kind of warm at the very same time. DJ, let's bring it back to Max and Mac 10. They have the new, the old, the off the wall. So let's bring it to them. Hello and welcome to the Music Men. I'm Mac 10 and these are fireworks. Boop. And that's Max. Mac 10, how can there be fireworks? We're in space. Oh no! <laughs> and that's why he came after the fireworks, because he ruined them. Wow, okay, I'm hurt. But you know what? Here, let me make it up to you. I've got something new for us. All right. I got us a new sign. Oh. Oh my gosh. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Whoa. See? Dude, that looks really good. Does, good job. Yeah, good job. Good doesn't job. that make you up for it? You good on that one. I didn't even see it before then. Anyways, what do you say we get on to our show? I, I think we're in it. Old, new, and the off the wall, baby. Absolutely. Well, it's new, old, off the wall. New, old, off the wall. I old mean, comes before the new eventually. Exactly, but whatever. Anyways, what's our new album? All right, so Let's hear for it. our new album, we have Lil Dirt. He just dropped his 7220 album. 7220 is actually the name of his grandmother's house. That's where he lived. Um, this this album, he dropped it, uh, is the second album of hip hop that's uh, going 200,000 copies sold within the first week. And it, this, like they're, they're projecting that his album goes all the way up to number one, which is gonna be great. I would love to see it. I am a big Lil Durk fan. I love this album. I, I listen to it uh, start to end to really immerse myself in it. Uh, but it, it's really a, an album where he recollects on, uh, on his childhood, uh, raising up poor, what it's like to have to fill up gallons at the neighbor's house because he, they don't have the money for the, the water bill. But they, he reminisces on that part of his life and he shows that even when you outlive your friends and, and all your family, that you can still do it successfully and be successful and a good person while doing it. That yes, it, it was an amazing album. I think you should go listen to it. That's why it went number one. That it's is. also got uh, Morgan Wallen in it, country okay. singer. Wow. Country singers and rap. It's a big thing. We remember Old Town Road. It happened. That is, uh, I I can't think of any other examples of that. Wow, that is crazy. I I don't think. 
I want to know any other examples of it. We could keep <laughs> Lil Durk and Lil Nas X are the only only rappers with a country singer. Well, I there think you we go. should keep it that way. There you, I, uh, I imagine it's hard so, to pull uh, off. So what we got for the old, man? For the old, we've got an album I actually hold close to myself. We've got the Beatles' Rubber, rubber Soul. It's, yeah, it's very old, and yeah, it's Beatles, but Rubber Soul is an album I feel like it's really slept on. It's got a lot of great tracks. You've got Drive My Car, you've got Norwegian Wood, This Bird Has Flown. You've got a lot of early Beatles tracks that really help them find their sound, but aren't like, oh, we're still amateurs because it's the Beatles. They, they knew what they were doing before they were doing it, and then they just figured out what they were doing and professional exactly yes. exactly and it's a really it's a really good non thematical early beatles so if you don't want to get into like the weirder later stuff that sometimes doesn't really make sense rubber soul's a good one to pick up especially if you're one of those collectors and you want to get it on vinyl that is just Gotta that love is, the finals. Gotta exactly. Love. That's just a power play right there. You know, you have some friends over for dinner, and they're like, oh, we're going to play some dinner music? And you're like, yeah, and you pull out the vinyl. That's a power play. Yeah, when play. you buy the records, too, a lot, a lot of that money actually goes to the musician, and they're able to become more successful off of their art, and they get rewarded as they should when you buy their records physically, which is really cool. Wow, I did not actually know that. That's crazy. Support your artists. Exactly. Well, I think it's... My turn to do it. Yeah. Uh, off the wall off one, the baby. Wall. All right, I want to hear it. I think it's, yeah, it's my turn this week, or this time. Yes. Uh, this time. For this time, we've got Deltron 3030, their self-titled album. And it is, and you'd think, oh, Deltron 3030, what is this, some EDM artist? No, this is a rap group of Deltron 3030 and Dan the Automator doing a space rap opera. So like Logic meets Wu-Tang Clan. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it tells an overarching story of the year 3000, people are up in space, and there's a lot of lawlessness going on, and it's just this one man's plan on surviving whatever it takes. And there's even some non-song tracks that are just world building, and it's crazy how well they paint a picture in your mind in about an hour. So how well do you think these artists are known? Like I, I haven't heard of them until you brought them up, but I listened I listened to the one of the songs oh, really? off of the album. It was definitely off the wall, but I think that they hit in a way that a lot of other people miss. So oh, absolutely. I, I really enjoyed it. I didn't know them before uh, you actually brought it to the table, but when you did, I, I definitely think that there's playback value, and I oh. want to go listen to it again. It was oh, great. yeah. They are very much kind of roadies in the, like, early 2000s music world. They were very much like, oh, yeah, this, this person is also on the track with us, you know, featuring sometimes. Like, for example, album I talked about last time, Gorillaz, uh, uh, Deltron 3030 was actually on it. Crazy. Crazy. Enough. Exactly. So they're exactly. working with a lot of big artists. It's all, exactly. It's all coming back together. This is just their stuff. There's even a sequel to it. So I think that's about the time we've got. I think that we are out of time and it was a great time. Absolutely. Today's show is fun, but me and Archie will catch you next time. Access USI.